What's up everybody, it's your boy Reggie Casual, and welcome to WTH, where we break down the history of designers, labels, and brands. And today we're talking about one of the most historically significant Japanese street labels ever. Neighborhood Japan is next. Let's get it. Neighborhood was born in 1994 as an official part of the triumvirate of legendary street fashion brands to spring from the Urahara, the other two being Bape and Undercover of the Nowhere Store. But unlike Bape's penchant for hip hop and Undercover's nods to punk, Neighborhood would play with Americana to which its success was almost by chance. To hear Shinsuke Takizawa, the proprietor of the label, tell it, Neighborhood wasn't necessarily intended to be an Americana brand per se, but a brand that rested its laurels on function. In an interview with Grinson, he says, most people assume my philosophy is based around motorcycles and a vintage lifestyle, but the actual core of my philosophy is around function. I want people to buy our products because they are useful. And from this, I want people to use the products to develop their own personal style. But there is no denying neighborhoods aesthetic. The leather jackets, coveralls, overalls, workwear inspired shirts, and of course selvage denim all seem to hearken from biker culture, of which is at the core of Takizawa's very own lifestyle. A man who once bought a motorcycle for $8,000 in his 20s only to pay it off in 48 months. And that was the hook for him. But much like his contemporaries, Takizawa also took from an era of Japan that was heavily influenced by punk. From Sex Pistols to The Clash musically, to the designs of Vivian Westwood in the fashion department, Takizawa's inspirations would imbue a sense of rebelliousness in his designs and his future label. But how did he actually start? Well, it was Hiroshi Fujiwara, once again, who convinced Takizawa to work for his label Major Force. And after being kicked out of design school, this was a once in a life opportunity for the budding designer. From there, Takizawa would further learn design and took over the graphic production of the label. He would soon take that same energy and apply it to neighborhood, named after the very neighborhood of Harajuku where all this artistry was blossoming. Around the time Takizawa started Neighborhood, it wasn't the booming success he thought it would be. At first, the idea was to import clothing from the United States of the vintage variety. This didn't last long as the pieces didn't sell well. But then Takizawa and his partner at the time, Tetsu Nishiyama, the soon to be owner of Double Taps, would soon make their own screen printed shirts, which sold very well. This success led to Neighborhood's first cut and sew piece, a vintage wash overall, which laid the groundwork for Neighborhood becoming the de facto Japanese label that screamed Americana, done the Japanese way. In the streetwear community out west, Neighborhood became known as the Japanese label with crazy quality denim, even though there were others out there. But this worked for the brand. From patchwork designs to standard cuts, Neighborhood introduced an entire generation of fashion enthusiasts out west to the quality that Japan was capable of. The once industrial nation became the place to get the best quality stuff, and Neighborhood was a significant part of that in the world of fashion. Since then, Neighborhood hasn't changed much in terms of philosophy, invoking a sense of consistent quality that isn't afraid to take from a range of pop culture influences and subcultures. From store collabs such as Hoods, which carries double taps in the neighborhood, among others, to skate-centric collabs like those with Vans, to footwear collabs like those with Adidas, or like genre-bending collabs like those with Bape, music collabs like those with NERD, and finally questionable collabs like those with Antisocial Social Club. But it all works. And many fans of the brand may have reservations about this expansion, but it doesn't mean Neighborhood has lost its way over its 25 plus years. It simply means that Neighborhood is more than just Americana. It's just what its roots are in. It's about doing your own thing and accepting the past and the present. And that's evident in its approach. But for all the four rays Neighborhood has attached itself to, it still maintains its roots connected to American and British punk, motorcycle culture, and Americana. It also still offers that great denim in store. It has opened up a sub-label, Lucre, that goes further into Takizawa's interest but uses primarily graphic tees to present it. Neighborhood basically expands its sphere of influence as the culture expands, and they figure out ways to include everything apart 
of that street culture. To hear it from Takizawa, he's wholly surprised by neighborhood's growth and its expansion into different markets, but he's fully committed to keeping it as pure as when he first started. As long as we're satisfied with what we do, and if we can maintain our current style, I'll be happy, he says. And that's very Japanese of him. The most important element to many Japanese designers is to maintain consistency. Neighborhood still firmly plants its roots in the neighborhood, and the results speak for themselves. But that doesn't keep the streetwear heads out west from calling neighborhood streetwear and copying a few pieces. But the neighborhood crew doesn't mind. It's all in creating a personal style, not unlike how Takizawa did to create the brand in the first place. And that's it for this WTH, but tell us what you think of neighborhood in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you like this video and follow your boy and the casual official on Instagram at RagyCasual and thecasual.co. So stay with the opinion and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe, but most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy, keep it casual. I'll see you guys in a minute.